Hello there, and welcome to Science for Sleep, where curiosity gets cozy and science takes the scenic route to slumber. You're in just the right place to settle in, slow down, and let your thoughts drift like a feather on still water. Tonight, we're taking a very different journey. Not up toward the stars or across the vastness of space, but far beneath us, where light doesn't go and sound barely follows. The subject of tonight's slow and silent descent is something very real, very far away, and very easy to forget exists, and yet, it's as much a part of our world as anything on land. This place has no sky, it has no wind, it has no sunrises, no trees, and no seasons, but it is alive. It's called Challenger Deep, the lowest known point on Earth's surface, located within the Mariana Trench in the western Pacific Ocean, a trench so deep that if you placed Mount Everest into it, its peak would still be submerged under thousands of feet of water. But we're not dropping in all at once. Let's ease our way down into the idea, into the darkness, into the silence. Before we go further, I'd love to know where are you listening from tonight? And what's it like there in your corner of the world? Is it dark out yet? Or are you letting this play in the quiet hours of morning before the day has really begun? Either way, I'm glad you're here, and I hope this slow voyage downward offers you a kind of comfort. If you find this kind of calm relaxing, or if you're just quietly fascinated by what might be living in Earth's most unreachable places, I'd be ever so grateful if you gave the video a like or subscribed. Now make yourself comfortable, breathe slowly, and let the room fall away. Because the story we're exploring tonight takes place in a space that almost no one has seen. It begins not in laboratories or classrooms, but beneath more water than most of us can truly imagine. Challenger Deep isn't just far. It's deep in a way that doesn't make sense until you spend time with it. If you've ever stood at the shore and looked out over the ocean, it can feel immense. But what you see, that endless blue stretching to the horizon, is only the surface. Most of Earth is ocean, and most of that ocean is open depth, a kind of vertical desert. What's even more strange is how much of it is completely unexplored. The deep sea is in many ways Earth's own version of outer space. Close, constant, but mostly unreachable. Challenger Deep lies within the Mariana Trench, itself a geological scar, a place where two tectonic plates meet and one dives beneath the other. It's shaped like a long crescent-shaped groove in the seafloor, over 1,500 miles long. But what sets Challenger Deep apart is that it's the very bottom of that trench. To reach it, you'd have to travel nearly 36,000 feet straight down. That's about 11 kilometers. The numbers start to blur after a while. As you descend, the water gets darker, colder, and heavier. Not just metaphorically, but physically. The twilight zone and the midnight zone, which ends far above where we're going. At the deepest point, the pressure is more than a thousand times what you feel at sea level. That's the equivalent of eight tons per square inch. The name Challenger Deep comes from the HMS Challenger Expedition, which sailed in the 1870s. The ship was a floating laboratory. During one of its soundings, the crew dropped a weighted line into the ocean to see how deep it went. Somewhere near the Mariana Islands, the line kept going and going. The very first descent to Challenger Deep happened in 1960. A Swiss-designed bathyscaphe called the Trieste carried two men down into the trench. It took them nearly five hours to descend, and they only stayed for about 20 minutes. What they saw through the small window was mostly mud, but it was the pressure, the darkness, and the quiet that left the greatest impression. They reported seeing something like a flatfish stir in the sediment. A simple movement, but enough to upend theories about the limits of life. In 2012, filmmaker James Cameron made a solo descent to Challenger Deep in a sleek green submersible called the Deep Sea Challenger. What he saw wasn't dramatic in a visual sense. Instead, there was silt, darkness, slowness, and yet life, tiny shrimp-like creatures, worms, microbes in the mud. The creatures that live in Challenger Deep are not just slightly different versions of surface animals. They are entirely separate branches of the tree of life. Cell membranes are more fluid. Enzymes are stabilized with unique molecules. Some of these adaptations are so specific that if brought to the surface, they would disintegrate. Scientists have started to look at these deep-sea organisms as analogs for life that might exist on other planets or moons. 
Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus both appear to have subsurface oceans. If Earth's deepest, darkest trench can harbor life, could those alien oceans do the same? The more we learn about life in Challenger Deep, the more we understand how flexible biology can be. And that flexibility is one of the things that make life so resilient and so beautiful. There's something about imagining that place, a part of Earth so unreachable, so alien, and yet right here with us that stirs a very particular kind of feeling. It's a kind of reverence like walking into a cathedral made of darkness and time. It's the knowledge that while we live our fast, busy, light-filled lives up here, there is a place where time moves differently, where the water presses in so tightly that every breath of life is a miracle, where light never arrives and still something stirs in the mud. If you were to trace a finger slowly across the vastness of the Pacific Ocean on a map, you might pass over it without ever noticing. It doesn't call attention to itself. It is the result of slow, grinding forces that have been at work longer than almost anything we can remember. It's called a subduction zone where one of Earth's massive tectonic plates is slowly sliding beneath another. You could take the tallest mountain on land, Mount Everest, and place it inside the Mariana Trench. Its peak would still be over a mile below the ocean's surface. The pressure at that depth is equivalent to having a stack of about 50 jumbo jets sitting on top of you. It's a kind of pressure that changes the rules of matter itself. Many deep-sea creatures have no internal air pockets, nothing that would collapse under pressure. Instead, they are soft-bodied with flexible structures that don't resist the weight but absorb it. There's a substance known as TMAO that helps stabilize proteins under high pressure. Interestingly, this is the same molecule that gives fish their distinct smell. Light has vanished. It didn't go all at once the way a switch flips in a dark room. Instead, it thinned out gradually, layer by layer, until it simply stopped reaching us. By the time we approach the Hadal zone, light is no longer something that can reach us at all. It isn't dim, it isn't faint, it simply isn't there. In Challenger Deep, we are several miles beneath all of it. Light is no longer part of the environment. It's not reduced or obstructed. It's gone. Just let your mind settle into the idea of being there at the edge of the known world, listening to the silence, watching the sediment fall like snow in a gravity we cannot feel. Because in Challenger Deep, there are no tides. There are no storms, only stillness. A kind of peace not found anywhere else on Earth. And maybe, just maybe, that's part of why we're so drawn to it. Because in the deepest place, the noise stops. And when the noise stops, sometimes we can finally begin to hear what we've been missing.